Hello everybody! Let me start a short presentation with a riddle. What do a cat, a Russian doll and Hercules have in common? Believe it or not, the answer is the Digital Services Act package. You all have seen funny videos of cats on the internet, haven't you? But this is a rather recent development. I am sure that most of you still remember the good old times where you could not share YouTube videos of kitties with your Facebook friends or tweet about it with just a click on your smartphone. You probably know that those services are regulated at European level by a rather old legal instrument, the so-called Directive on Electronic Commerce, also known as the e-commerce directive. One advantage of the rules contained in the Directive on Electronic Commerce is their simplicity. They are straightforward, everything is clear. They also have clear effects. Like a modern Pontius pilot, service providers can virtually wash their hands off whatever users do. In theory, at least. So what is the problem with this directive? Well, for starters, this directive is a regulatory answer to problems apparent in the year 2000. A world without Facebook, YouTube and smartphones. And very importantly, despite its given name, the e-commerce directive regulates much more than just commerce. Because these services have an impact on freedom of expression, on cultural diversity, on copyrighted works, even on free elections. Now, the question is whether this simple, straightforward legal solution is fit for purpose in 2021. That is, in a world that has become way more complicated. Of course, the beauty of the e-commerce directive lies in its simplicity. Adding layers of regulation increases complexity, which could lead to confusion, overlapping and even contradiction between different legal norms. Moreover, the fundamental freedom of expression limits the legislator's room for maneuver. Another option could be to leave the policing of the internet to big companies from the other side of the Atlantic. So you might be wondering, what is the European Union doing? In Europe, change has been in the making for quite a long time. The European Union has already introduced exceptions to the e-commerce directive rules in two legal instruments. The revision of the Audiovisual Media Services Directive extended the directive's scope to cover video sharing platforms. Article 17 of the Directive on Copyright in the Single Market introduced new obligations for online content sharing platforms. Besides this, a political agreement has been reached on a Commission's proposal for a regulation on preventing the dissemination of terrorist content online. In 2019, the European Commission launched the process for the adoption of a more comprehensive regulatory package, the so-called Digital Services Act package. As a result of this process, two new regulation proposals, the Digital Services Act and the Digital Markets Act, were published on 15 December 2020. The Digital Services Act is a bit like a Russian doll. It provides rules for intermediary services offering network infrastructure with special rules for hosting providers, online platforms and very large platforms. The Digital Services Act will introduce a series of obligations graduated on the basis of the size of the service and its impact, such as measures to counter illegal goods, services or content online new obligations on traceability of business users in online marketplaces, effective safeguards for users, transparency measures for online platforms, specific obligations for very large platforms to prevent the misuse of their services, access for researchers to key data of the largest platforms in order to understand how online risks evolve an oversight structure to address the complexity of the online space. As you can see on the screen, intermediary services get some basic obligations to which further obligations are added depending on the nature and size of the service.
If the Digital Services Act rules look like a Russian doll, the Digital Markets Act looks more like Hercules trying to capture Cerberus. As you surely know, Cerberus was in Greek and Roman mythology the gatekeeper of hell. The Digital Markets Act regulates gatekeepers of a slightly different place, the Internet. Gatekeepers are those online platforms that have a significant impact on the internal market, serve as an important gateway for business users to reach their customers and enjoy or will foreseeably enjoy an entrenched and durable position. In a nutshell, the Digital Markets Act will define quantitative thresholds as a basis to identify presumed gatekeepers. The Commission will also have powers to designate companies as gatekeepers following a market investigation. It will prohibit a number of practices which are clearly unfair. It will require gatekeepers to proactively put in place certain measures. It will impose sanctions for non-compliance to ensure the effectiveness of the new rules. It will allow the Commission to carry out targeted market investigations. As you may have guessed, the publication of these two regulations have raised hopes, fears, and most of all, questions. Lots of questions. Here are some of them. Does the Digital Services Act really introduce a good Samaritan clause like the one found in US legislation? Will the Digital Services Act trump the terms and conditions of service providers? What is exactly meant by know your business customer? Who should be considered as a trusted flagger? Harmful versus illegal, is it a distinction with or without a difference? What will be the interplay between the Digital Services Act and audiovisual or copyright legislation? How will data transparency be achieved in practice? What will be the role of national regulators? And what about cultural diversity in all this? Well, let's talk about it.